Hey, what's good internet? Mr. Zensphere here with another Renoise tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make wavetables in Renoise. Uh, the basic concept is pretty simple, um, although it does take a little bit of work to set up. Um, but uh, first I'm just going to show you some examples or play some examples of uh, wavetable sounds that I've made uh, in Renoise here. <laughs> This is just a basic little FM lead. Uh, here's a pad based on wave folding. See what this one is. And of course, you can see I've got the wavetable position automated. You can do that with the macro control doofer that I've got on my Gumroad. This one is just using two frames and some free running LFOs. You can hear there's quite a bit of timbral variety in this one. It's just modulating the wavetable position. Show you maybe one more. And this is just using a harmonic series uh, to create some timbral variation. Um, so I'll show you how to do this. It's pretty straightforward. Um, we're going to be doing this with effects chains. Um, so I'll just show you kind of the basic concept using two effects chains. Um, the first thing you're going to need is a LFO. And you're going to need a gainer as well. <clears throat> and we'll just duplicate this chain here. Well, actually, first we'll, we'll tweak some of these parameters. So we're going to take this LFO, turn the amplitude all the way up, and the frequency all the way down. We're going to go to a custom one-shot waveform. And uh, for simplicity's sake, we can just leave this as a uh, straight ramp up. And we're going to set our destination to gainer gain. And we actually want this to modulate the gainer from negative infinity to zero. So we're going to tweak these values here. We'll set our amplitude to 25% and our offset to 12.5%. Um, and then uh, we will tie our reset value to a macro. So we're just going to hook this up to our reset. And then as we turn this, we can see that we're modulating this gainer from negative infinity all the way. Oh, is that correct? Hold on. Well, that should be correct, but it isn't for some reason. Uh, I think it actually just has to do with uh, my controller. Um, but you can see it's basically going to zero and negative infinity. For some reason, it's not hitting those values exactly right, but it should be. Um, normally it does, but you know, snafus. Uh, we're going to duplicate this chain and we'll first, we'll, uh, let's select this and we'll flip it. So go to process, uh, flip selection and oops take that out and then we've got this one uh, going the opposite direction and we'll just tie this reset to the macro as well and so now um, as we scale this macro we're crossfading between one waveform and another and if you want you can kind of dial in this curve so that there's more of an even um, an even shift between the two i find around uh negative point one oops 
0.1 and negative 0.1 are pretty good values. So we'll set this one to 0.1 and we'll set this one to negative 0.1, our slope values. And this should create a fairly smooth crossfade between the two of them. Uh, and the two of what, you say, uh, we need to generate some waveforms here. And there are a host of really excellent waveform generators um, available for Renoise. Uh, you can also drop in whatever samples you want to use. Uh, these could be single cycle waveforms or they could be longer waveforms. It's really just up to you. Um, but I'm going to, for the sake of this demonstration, use the, uh, I'll use this tool, Macwell Schrochidl by uh, Marpweck. And I'm just going to reset this patch. And... Bring this to a saw wave, oops, and we'll just bring this to full amplitude and I'm going to bring this down a couple octaves. We've got a saw wave here and then we'll create another waveform here and we'll do a square wave for this one. So now I've got my two waveforms and here we're just hearing the saw wave. Uh, we need to make sure these are both looping forward if we're using single cycle waveforms. And we also need to assign this to the second effects chain. Now, we can crossfade between a saw and a square wave. <clears throat> and we can just designate this wavetable position so we know what it's for. And the advantage of doing it this way uh, in the effects section is that now we can use one modulation set uh, to impact both samples. So say we wanted to put a filter on here, uh, we could easily put a filter on there. Let's do a bandpass filter, uh, keep the resonance about where it is, and then we can assign our second macro to this bandpass frequency. <laughs> And you might notice some like uh, inconsistencies in the volume curve. Um, and you can dial that in by changing uh, this slope here, uh, just so it's uh, a little cleaner. You can also change the, uh, the gain by uh, adding a second gainer after in the chain. And then you can use this as kind of like a makeup gain. So the square sounds a little louder to me, so I think for the saw wave, I will just bump up the gain a little bit. Now, because this is a simple volume crossfade, you may get some phase interference, some phase cancellation um, as you're kind of blending these two waveforms. And that's just how it is, but usually it's not too big a deal, especially if you're using uh, more complex waveforms. If you're using really simple waveforms, you might notice that more. Um, but I've, uh, I've created a suite of wavetable instruments. Um, there's a two-frame wavetable, and there's a four-frame wavetable, a six-frame wavetable, and an 11-frame wavetable. And uh, these are available on my Gumroad if you want to save yourself the, the work and the hassle. And you just load these up and then you drop in however many waveforms you want, making sure that they're all looping. And uh, then you can go to town. Um, there, the effects chain is already set up. There's uh, this post gain um, makeup uh, macro on each of these frame doofers. Uh, so you can adjust the frames relative to each other. And then everything is being sent to this summation uh, effects chain. So if you want uh, an effect uh, or multiple effects to impact all of the sounds, um, you can just put them on this sum chain here. Now you might be asking, why would I want to do wavetable synthesis in Renoise when Vital is free? Uh, maybe you have Serum or some other wavetable synth. Um, and there, there might be some reasons. Uh, you know, perhaps uh, Vital doesn't play well with your computer, as in my case. Um, or perhaps you find it more CPU efficient to do your synthesis and renoise. Um, but I think the main reason is you can take advantage of the power and flexibility of the instrument effects chain. So you can 
add as many effects as you want. You can, you know, do some parallel processing by splitting out into some more effects chains. Um, you can, you know, do your instrument modulation within the effects chain as well. Uh, you can apply effects uh, in between this frame doofer and the send doofer to have uh, specific effects only um, impacting one part of the wavetable, which can be kind of an interesting effect. Um, so, um, yeah, this is uh, how you do wavetable synthesis in Renoise. It's pretty straightforward, especially if you, you know, save these, um, if you make them, you have to kind of figure out how the, how the frames work, the curves work for each frame. Um, but once you have them, it's really handy to add some more life and movement to your sounds uh, within Renoise while also keeping your CPU low and having the flexibility and power of the instrument effects section available to you. So I hope this makes sense. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to hit me up in the comments. Uh, if you want to get this uh, suite of wavetable instruments, it does contain all four. Uh, just check out my Gumroad. I'll put the link in the description. Uh, if you need Renoise lessons, hit me up. And uh, yeah, keep being awesome. Keep making lots of music. We'll see you again soon. Peace.